So, good afternoon guys. I am um, cramped into the back of a, I'm under a bed right now. So I'm in the back of a L4 H3 Citroen Relay, which was um, converted by a guy called Liam. Um, Liam's in the north of England and he is called Liam the Terrible on YouTube or Instagram. Um, if you follow me, you, you might know him already, but he contacted me before he started this build and he said, would I be interested in helping out with this side of things? And I said, yeah, sure. Um, so we've kind of collaborated on this one. Um, we just communicated through the build and then uh, Maiko, the owner of the vehicle, just drove it down to me after Liam was finished with it. So as you can see, we've got some nice blue boxes behind me and um, I'm really pleased that Maiko kind of like, I think he'd done some reading, he'd done some research and he knew that he wanted some quality equipment. So um, I didn't have to skimp here. Um, it was really nice to be able to install a quality system um, com entirely as well like everything from the battery to the inverter that i've got here behind me um so it's been a real pleasure to work with him um so what i'm going to do is on this video i'm just going to run through the system with you if you're interested um stick around if you're not go and hit another video um so up here in the left hand top corner we've got an mppt solar charge controller now this is bluetooth enabled and you will find that with most victron stuff it's bluetooth or it's smart so most of it's named smart if it's bluetooth enabled um and that's good for two reasons um one you can view it on your phone um and two it can network so it can talk to the system can talk to each other depending on what has bluetooth and what hasn't doesn't um and it just helps to manage the power balance the system um so it just helps i guess with the longevity of like the battery um and just making sure that you're using the power um probably in the most efficient way possible so what you'll notice with the Victron stuff, I think it's very easy to understand. Um, this on the front has written 100-50. Um, that means we can put a maximum of 100 volts here, uh, volts into this unit, and it will output a maximum of 50 amps to the battery for charging. So you always want to make sure that this unit here is sized appropriately, depending on the size of the panel that you have on your roof. Um, but yeah, I mean, do some research on that if you're going to install one. Um, you don't always need to go big. If you've got a smaller panel, you can go for a smaller one. And then moving to the left here, we've got an Orion um, smart charger. Now, battery to battery charger, DC charger, whatever you want to call it. This charges up this battery when you're driving the vehicle. Now, I really like that this is Bluetooth enabled because when the engine is running, not when you're driving, um, you can check and see if this is working, the power it's putting back into the battery here. Um, and if you really want to see exactly how much power you've got going in, then this little guy down here, which is called a smart shunt, can tell you exactly how many watts are going back into this battery, um, second by second, um, is great. So this kind of like system that we've got set up here is, is, is perfect. I really, really enjoy this. Now, you can get this unit here with a screen that goes in the front. I personally don't really see the point. Like I, I don't need to check a, a screen that, that says it all the time. Um, I mean, they're great if you want to monitor the system on a kind of hourly basis or a daily basis, but um, I really like the Bluetooth one. So personal preference though, some people really like to have an analog screen um, or a digital screen. So yeah, this unit here, so this, is uh, an Orion TR Smart 12 12 30 and that means 12 volts input from the back from the engine back 12 volts output to the battery and 30 amps maximum now I've run these before and they're really good they actually output more than 30 amps um, when they need to I think I've seen them go up to about 35 amps um, they're a really good unit. I think they're really good value for money um, and really solid. Massive heat sink here on the back. Um, nice and quiet. Um, no noisy fan or anything there. So really solid, good unit. Um, up here in the corner, oh, I'm gonna have to do some yoga in the back of this fan. Um, up here in the corner, we've got a Victron um, Phoenix inverter. Um, and as you can see, this is spaced off of the wall. So it allows air so I can get my hand behind there. Um, it just allows air to circulate around this unit. Um, this has an eco mode. 
um, you can actually wire this to a switch in the front as well so you, you could turn it on and off without coming back here um, this one is going to be left on permanently because the owner is running a 230 volt fridge in the front so he wants to leave this on all the time um, that's exactly what I've done in my van build and um, it works great it's not noisy at all it draws around 0 0.8 amps if it's on standby all the time um, but that's not going to be a problem here because we've got a 300 amp power battery there which is huge that's going to last for the best part of a week I would guess um, so yeah Victron inverters are really good quality and you'll notice this one is pretty big um, it's actually really big and it's, it's only a 1200 watt I say only 1200 watts will do the majority of, of things that most people need um, but if you start looking on eBay or Amazon you will notice that 1200 watt inverters will be considerably smaller than this they will also be considerably lighter than this now this unit here is is heavy um, and my guess is that there's I haven't taken one apart actually it's not my guess because I've seen a strip down of one there's copper inside here um, the cheaper ones will probably be made with aluminium transformers um, longevity wise these things are installed in boats for like 30 years they come out they're still working and people sell them on eBay so yes this is going to cost you a little bit more to get started but you're going to have the um, the reliability um, factor so you know that if you're buying it you're not going to be swapping it out in six months time because it overheated and it blew up so I think that's the thing you want to bear in mind when you're pricing up a Victron system it's it's about reliability um, if you're going to be in a vehicle um, a lot of the time or on holidays you don't want to go away and for your week to potentially be ruined because um, something stopped working um, all systems have their flaws and I'm not saying Victron could never go wrong but you're definitely um, you've definitely got better chances of having a, a hassle-free system when you use this equipment um, so just going on to the system kind of wiring side I know a lot of people get confused when it comes to electric so I just want to run through this to help break it down if, if you're if you're looking at this and thinking oh I want something like that in my van but I don't know like it looks so looks like there's so many wires um, it's actually pretty simple once you get your head around it so I'm just gonna try and run you through it right now um, so obviously on each battery you've got a negative and a positive um, these cables are 35 millimeters uh, squared um, so I've got obviously positive negative so let's go with the positive first so the positive is coming up here to an isolator switch um, which then comes across into this and this is a fused live buzz bar um, in this it has a mega fuse um, which is 175 amps and I install this in the system um, so that this will blow before this the one in here blows so that's just kind of a bit of insurance a safety measure to install that um, coming to the top of this buzz bar we've got four sections for out power outputs and each one is a, a MIDI fuse um, and they're all fused according to the size of cable that I've used and the size of the actual unit like what does the unit need to run so in this case 60 amp fuse 60 amp fuse and I think 30 amp fuse there so that's the uh, power side and the the reason you would want to put an isolator in your system is because if I switch that off now like that nothing is being drawn or put into these batteries so if I disconnect this power this um, positive cable here um, and I go to remove the battery and it, it touches this negative it's not gonna um, spark off um, because for example we would have power coming down still into this system this side from the MPPT so to isolate those leads it makes it a much safer system um, from this this is then the distribution hub so these ca these red cables then go out to each appliance um, and that's going to provide power to them the other side of the system is the negative side and as I mentioned earlier we've got a smart shunt here now the smart shunt needs to be installed before all of the negative I want to say loads but it needs to be installed before um, you earth out all of your appliances so we come from the battery into the smart shunt and then the smart shunt goes up to a, a isolated buzz bar here this is rated to 350 amps 
and this is actually earthed out to the the body as well so the whole system is earthed to the body of the vehicle um, and this comes with a cover on the front so you've got four screws that that comes off and then behind there we've got all of our connections but i really like those because if if one positive power cable was to touch it it's not going to earth out against the buzz bar so in the corner there we have a 12 volt fuse box um fuse panel this is that's all of our loads in the inside the van so water pumps um, max fan lighting um anything like that on the 12 volt side is going to come off of this unit here now you'll have to forgive the stickers that come with these kits um they're quite comical uh, you can you'll buy them but they always come kind of like stick it up for a boat so you have to kind of take like the heater the chinese diesel heater is um is, is listed here as blower not as not as a heater so you just have to get as close as you can um and that's what i've done it's got stickers on there um, but they're just as close as possible so that's this side of the system um we're just going to pop into the front and i'm just going to show you the few bits i've done there i'm not going to do this as a van tour so i'm going to try and keep the rest of the van out of sight but we'll just pop into the front of the van and i'll show you what i've done there you've probably seen one of these before they're pretty universal when it comes to camper vans now Micah didn't actually need any of these switches to work so all I've done is disconnected all of these from the back uh, you'll probably see those before so I've just disconnected those and he's going to use this as a panel if in future he wants to use those switches he can um, but right now he doesn't need to so they're all disconnected so they'll light up but they don't actually do anything um, and then but it's quite nice because it's a it's a really neat panel um, and you've got a 12 volt outlet there which is your kind of general cigarette lighter socket um, it's got a readout just for reference during the day if he doesn't want to check the smart shunt um, he can come here and just have a look at the voltage um, and then off to the right he's got two usb um, outlets there as well so that's i think a really nice little control panel um, We've got that installed and then just below me here we've got um, the inverter is charging my other camera battery and uh, also my Makita, uh, my Milwaukee battery as well. Um, this is a, it's a really nice van. I, I wish I could do a van tour for you but like I said I'm going to leave that one to Liam. Um, the lights in this one are cool, they've got a remote that go with them but um, yeah that's pretty much the uh the kind of power system side sorted if you've got any comments questions suggestions please stick them down in the comments below if you like the video please give it a thumbs up um if you didn't please comment and tell me why you didn't like it um but you can go ahead and find me on instagram at about a van um if you're living in the uk and you need any victron stuff for your build or you're not confident about uh, how you're going to wire your system up then get in touch with me i'll put my email in the description below um, i can supply most victron stuff within a couple of days um, and i can also help you with wiring fuse sizes cable sizes and stuff like that so i have on a few occasions provided kind of like complete shopping lists for people so that it's it's plug and play when it arrives you know you've got all the connect uh, correct terminal sizes fuses and stuff like that so i hope you've enjoyed thanks very much for watching and you'll be seeing another video soon